You fool! Warren is dead. Welcome to Horror Babble. We're thrilled to share our latest audio drama with you today. The strange events surrounding the disappearance of a paranormal investigator in Tentacles. Tentacles is presented as an episode of a fictional podcast called Finders Creepers with Lana Thompson, in which the host investigates supposed evidence pertaining to mysterious and supernatural events. This recording is dedicated to our Cthulhu and Yellow Level Horror Babblers on Patreon, each of whom are named in the video description below. Thanks as always for your support, folks. Be sure to pop your headphones on for this one. We hope you enjoy it. Tentacles by Ian Gordon with thanks to our producers, Ashley Lindsay, Cody Steck, Cameron Seegers, and Patrick. Hey ho, you're listening to the show. Find us creepers with me, Lana Thompson. I'm back again with another macabre discovery, the Miles Gordon tapes. I know what you're thinking. It can't be the real thing, and you may be right. After all, the tapes were sent to me anonymously. I have no way of verifying their authenticity. I'm going to assume the whole thing's a hoax. To do otherwise would be to knowingly broadcast the final moments of a man whose whereabouts remain unknown to this day. For the small minority out there who may be unfamiliar with the case, Miles Gordon was a 27-year-old vlogger from Preston from the small town of Rutley, to be specific. He had a marked interest in haunted houses, a hobby that took him up and down the country, exploring abandoned buildings with a plethora of recording equipment, documenting his thoughts and experiences in real time, to be shared with his listeners later. But the piece de resistance for Gordon was the dilapidated Mornington House in his hometown of Rutley, the very place that triggered his obsession. An acute fear of the house had delayed an investigation, but, in the end, encouraged, or should I say, goaded, by what had become a rather sizeable online following, he finally made plans to explore the old place. When Gordon failed to present his findings the following week, members of his online forum expressed concern. Two days later, 18th of May 2016, the police made a search of Mornington House, but the man in question was nowhere to be found. Though the police would later deny rumours that recording equipment had been found in the basement, subscribers to Gordon's vlog claimed that the daring investigator had been planning the expedition for years, he called it his Everest, and that he absolutely would have taken his recording kit with him. Nevertheless, I have in my possession recordings that appear to confirm the suspicions of Gordon's subscribers. And I have to admit that if this is a hoax, the person imitating the late vlogger has his voice down to a T. In terms of the tapes themselves, there are two of them, standard 60-minute cassette tapes, in fair condition. Gordon preferred analogue to digital, saying that analogue mediums captured more accurately the phenomena he claimed to encounter in the houses he explored. He probably wouldn't approve, but I've digitised the tapes, removed a number of extended periods of silence, and I'm presenting a 30-minute edit for you tonight. As always, I'll refrain from jumping to conclusions. That's your job, listener. So here it is. Be sure to let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Over to you, Miles. Okay. It's 3.15pm, and I'm here on Woodland Grove, Rutley, mere steps away from the dreadful dwelling that has haunted me for as long as I can remember. As most of you guys already know, Mornington House is the very place that triggered my interest in this stuff all those years ago. I think it's only appropriate to reiterate that story before I head inside, as... Who are you talking to? Uh, it's for an online show, I... All the best. Jesus. Where was I? Yeah, so, the story behind my interest in Mornington House. 
I grew up a couple of streets over from here, Kensington Avenue, actually. And as a kid, me and my mates would knock about near the garages at the back of Woodland Grove. There was an area of long grass back there, which made for an excellent place to build dens and that sort of thing. I don't really remember noticing Mornington House till one summer in particular. I'm not sure of the exact year, but I was either nine or ten years old at the time, which is going back 17 years or so. Me and my mates, Gaz, Pete and Philippa, had climbed a big tree we used to call the Nest and were perched like birds up there, listening to Gaz talk about Mornington House and the old man who apparently lived there. You see, Gaz lived on Woodland Grove and had a good view of the place from his mum and dad's bedroom. Old Man Smith wasn't a man, he said. He was a mollusk. <laughs> I vividly remember him using that word. Because at the time I hadn't a clue what a mollusk was. He said Old Man Smith didn't walk like the rest of us. He hovered. And worst of all, he said, Old Man Smith had a taste for human flesh. Mm. Naturally, Gaz's tail had the four of us on tenterhooks, so it was unsurprising that my gaze that afternoon should seek the rear windows of Mornington House in quest of this monstrous figure. And it was just then that I saw something in the upper window. The outline of a tall figure. A floating monster in the shape of a man. Where its arms should have been, two tentacles, long and nightmarishly strange, thrashed dreadfully. And then it hurled itself at the glass. I closed my eyes and I remember screaming out loud, insisting that Gaz shut up to never speak of old man Smith again. And I was out of there and didn't look back. Eh, uh, well, it was only later that I learned Mornington House was uninhabited. Old Man Smith was the creation of Gaz Roberts, the result of a wildly overactive imagination. But ever since that chance glimpse of the thing that wasn't a man, I've been wary of this place. Still, I pass by often in my teens, eyeballing the place with macabre wonder. I never saw Old Man Smith again. Though standing in the shadow of that great pile, I was always faintly aware of an odour. A fishy odour, if you catch my drift. And so, ladies and gents, perhaps now you'll appreciate why today's assignment is such a tough one. To give you a better impression of what I'm looking at here, the house is a very typical, detached, double-fronted Victorian affair over three floors, with large bay windows and a gabled porch, it's a big, beautiful place. A bit of a shame it's been left to rot all these years. Anyway, I'd better get inside before common sense rears its ugly head. Back in a mop. Well, guys, I'm inside. <laughs> it's pretty gloomy in here, but I should be able to get by without a torch. For now, at least. Had a bit of a job Jimmy in the lock. It had pretty much fused. According to my research, the last owner died in 1989. Didn't even live here, and his name wasn't Smith, either. Mr Richard Francis was the name listed on the register. Apparently the local authority owns it now. It's a listed building. Need some TLC, but I reckon that'll be a job for the next owner. I better watch my step in here. There's shit everywhere. Still receiving mail, too. It isn't addressed to anybody in particular, but I do find it odd that the postie deems it necessary to deliver to what is so obviously a derelict property. Anyway. To describe the hall I'm standing in, hmm. I bet one or two of you out there have seen the movie Psycho, right? Well, picture the entrance hall in Norman's big old house and you'll get a decent impression of what this space looks like. To my immediate right, there's a set of closed double doors. Directly opposite the front door here, a bleak staircase ascends into gloomy uncertainty. I don't like the look of it up there, to be honest. To the left of the stairs, a passageway leads to what I believe are the rear rooms of the property. Can't make much out back there, to be honest. To my immediate left, though, a set of open double doors lead to what appears to be a large living room. There's a dim glow in there. Again, I... I don't really like the look of it, but I reckon that's going to be my first port of call. Oh, 
Jesus. Oh, my. What is that? Oh. Mm. Now, I mentioned that fishy smell, didn't I? Oh. Oh. It stinks in here. There's more than just fish, too. Oh. The walls are damp. There's mould everywhere. I better not disturb anything. Don't want to be breathing spores in again. <laughs> Any of you remember my visit to Whitlock Priory? <laughs> exactly. That place was more mould than building. Oh. Well, I, I found the source of that glow, ladies and gents. I'm approaching the far corner of the room. The northwest corner. A cluster of mushrooms have taken up residence here. Never seen anything like it. They're giving off a soft luminescence. A bluish-green glow. I've heard of foxfire, but I've never seen it with my own eyes. There's nothing supernatural about it, though. Hmm. I'm looking at a mouldering coffee table in the middle of the room. I don't know how I feel about it. Though some of the items on it, a couple of cups, a plate and an old vase, appear to have been here for a very long time. There are one or two things that look like recent additions. One is a candle, a typical church candle, looks brand new. The other thing, well, I don't know. Don't want to get too close to it, to tell you the truth. Looks like an organ, a chicken art, something. It's glistening in the glow here, yeah, looks fresh. Where did it get here? And under the table, yeah, there's a deck of playing cards. I'm going to grab it. Mm. Mm. Sounds like most of the cards are missing. No, oh. that's pretty weird. Two jokers. One of them is grinning like a madman, whereas the other is wincing. He's got no arms. And that's it. Yeah, very weird. Church candle, a fresh chicken heart. And two jokers. Any thoughts, guys? I'm going to record a few minutes of ambience for editing purposes. Right. There's another door on the back wall. Let's see what's on the other side of it. It's a dining room. I've always wanted to say that. From the looks of it, a dining room come library. A large table is on its side on the north wall, surrounded by tattered books and piles of old newspapers. Again, there's mould everywhere. More glowing mushrooms, too. And the smell. Christ, it's like an abandoned fish market in here. There are signs of recent activity in here, too. More candles burn this time and an area that appears to have been swept clean of detritus. Evidence of a squatter, perhaps? Hmm. If so, the person in question must have gained access to the house through a window or something. Hmm. Yeah. Whoever cleared this space did so to do a spot of reading, it would seem. There's all sorts of stuff here. A tea stain mug, more newspapers, and then a couple of weird sketches. Jesus, this is just bizarre. Looks exactly like, exactly like what I saw in the window upstairs when I was a kid. It's just a silhouette, really. A, a tall, dark figure with tentacles where the arms are supposed to be. I mean, the hell? The sketch is captioned. Not a clue what it says. It appears to be in a language I don't recognise. Ngar... Rumpf, something, something, Rillier, something, Fatagon. Probably shouldn't read this stuff aloud. What happened to the person who sketched this? Who was it? Are they still here? There's only one way to find out. There's another door here. If I'm right, it connects with a passageway next to the stairs in the hall. It does indeed. I'm entering the hall again, but this time I'm going to proceed to my left, further into the rear of the property. Better pause to switch tapes.
Okay, I'm back. It's very dark back here, but my eyes seem to have adapted somewhat. It's more than a little creepy, folks. Man, you'd think that after 30 excursions like this, I'd get used to it. My heart's thumping here. I feel like I shouldn't really be talking about what I saw on that piece of paper back there in the dining room. Kind of like doing so is a sort of provocation. But I can't get it out of my head. Those strange words, too. It's significant, I know it is. The question is, in what way is it significant? Frankly, I'm freaked out, guys, but perhaps I'm onto something tangible at last. Anyway, I think I'm approaching the kitchen. It's a kitchen, all right. What used to pass for one, anyway? Oh, man. I think I found the source of that smell. What the... There's a... Well, let me do my best to describe the scene. The kitchen's a fair size, say, uh, some 15 feet squared. Entering from the south, you're met by dusty, tarnished units along the east and west walls. On the north wall, a meagre amount of light streaming in through boarded up windows draws your eye to a double fridge deprived of its doors in the northeast corner. And it's from inside the fridge that a flask has at some point toppled over, and its contents, whatever they were, have spilled onto the floor. But here's the thing. Whatever that stuff was, it looks like it was corrosive. It seems to have pooled in the middle of the room and eaten into the ground, resulting in a huge aperture. Sounds weird, I know, but I'm not sure how else to describe what I'm looking at. The tiles at the edge of the thing have all but melted. It's the strangest thing. Man, the smell, it's just horrendous. I'm peering over the edge. There's liquid down there. It's dark, but it looks thick, frothy. Seriously, the smell is sickening. Oh, I can no longer liken it to anything I recognise. I wouldn't like to slip into that stuff, that's for sure. I'm going to backtrack for now. Can't think straight with that smell so strong in the air. Can't be good for me. It's making my arms itch. Mm. I'm making my way back into the hall. Okay, back in a more, folks. I'm by the front door again. The doors at the bottom of the stairs here appear to be blocked from the other side. I'm not sure I want to know by what. I'll take my chances upstairs, I think. I'm not looking forward to heading up there, if I'm totally honest, guys. This place is so utterly unlike the other houses I've explored. There's something here. Something physical. You might say it's just a heightened sense of apprehension, owing to what I saw here as a kid. And you might be right. But I've got a strong feeling that if I were to spend any prolonged period of time here, I'd probably lose my mind. <laughs> if, that is, the damp didn't kill me first. Okay. Well, I'm going to record a little more ambience here. It'll be interesting to play some of this back later. God knows what I might hear. Right, guys, I'm back, and I'm approaching the stairs. Man, feels like they're going to give under my weight. Oh, better be careful here. It's significantly darker upstairs. I still can't make a thing out up there. Looks like the torch is going to have to come out after all. <laughs> Shit!
Okay. There was something up there at the top of the stairs. Yeah, I can't check right now, but I'm pretty sure I got the thing on tape. That shriek. I knew I should have brought the head cam. I'm not really sure how to describe it. It wasn't human, that's for sure. It was on four legs, for lack of a better word, like a dog. But it wasn't covered in fur. It had smooth, fluke-like skin, if you get my gist. All bluish green and moist, like the mushrooms in the living room. But the face, if you can call it a face, more like a mouth cut into a sack of flesh, it looked at me with deep-set, translucent eyes. I swear it was afraid of me. Afraid of the light, perhaps. It took off faster than I did. It's got me itching again. Mm. Oh. The question is, do I really want to head back in there after that? Knowing that it's in there, I mean. Whoa. What the fuck was that? I don't know, man, but it sounded to me like something plunged into that weird pool in the kitchen. Fuck it, I'm going back in. Back in a mall. Jesus. Oh. There's a hole in the ceiling now, above the aperture in the ground. My God, it's in there. That thing's in there, writhing about in that liquid. Oh, the stench. Christ, I thought it was bad before. I've no way of knowing what's down there under that stuff, but that thing appears to be sinking deeper and deeper into it. Perhaps it connects with an old well or something. God help us if that stuff meets the water supply around here. Oh. Okay, with that thing out of the way, I, I'm going to head back upstairs. Crazy, I know. But this is it. This is what I've been chasing all these years. I'm so close to something tangible that I can feel it. Literally, this place gets under your skin. I can't stop itching. But this is what I do, man. These places can't hurt me. I know that. Like I said, that thing, whatever it was, it fled from me. <laughs> I doubt it's coming back. I'll pretend it's a rabbit. Rabbits only come out when you've gone. I'd better close the front door again. Don't want the neighbours getting unduly suspicious. Just got to be careful here. These old stairs could give it any... Whoa! Shit! Mm. It's okay, it's okay. Brought that on by going on about it, didn't I? Don't be deterred, Miles. Don't be deterred. It's grim up here, guys. Can't see much. Only what the torchlight uncovers. A few metres along the corridor to the west. I can see the hole created by that creature where it plunged into the pit below. I'm going nowhere near it, regardless of the fact that it's barring my access to the rooms beyond it. Wait a minute. What's that? I don't know if the mic will pick it up at this range, but I can hear a voice coming from one of the rooms down the hall to the east. I'm going to head towards it. It's coming from the other side of this door. Sounds like an old radio or something. I'm going in. Right. Let me record some of this before I describe the scene. Can't make anything out. Sounds like the same thing playing over and over. It's coming from an old CRT television. No picture accompanying it, just static blurring. I had enough of that. Now then, this room. It's a sparsely furnished bedroom. Next to the TV on a sideboard, there's a single bed stripped back to the mattress. A nasty-looking oak wardrobe and a very familiar-looking window on the north wall. Light streaming through it. Yeah... Pretty sure this is the room in which I glimpsed old man Smith all those years ago. 
Like the rooms downstairs, there's evidence of recent activity here. More candles burned, and a couple of glasses of water are full. Ah, I'm thirsty. There are clusters of mushrooms everywhere in here. The damp is pervasive. The stink from the kitchen is faintly detectable. I, I could taste it at the back of my throat. It's got me itching again. Can't stop itching. Oh my... What? What is that? Where I've been scratching... Where the tops of my arms meet my shoulders, there are small... bluish-green lumps, like... little growths. <laughs> oh, what just... burst? Oh my god, oh my god. Oh, my skin is sprouting mushrooms. <laughs> What's happening here? My arms. My arms. What's happening to my arms? Get them off me. Get them off me. I'm growing, growing tentacles. Hey, you. You help me. Help me. No. No. There you have it. Disgusting, right? So, is it a carefully crafted work of fiction or reality? Kind of sounds like Miles became the very thing he saw as a child in that upper window. Mornington House has since been condemned by Preston City Council. It is strictly off limits to the general public. Naturally, conspiracy theories abound, from the house being a direct gateway to hell, to Miles Gordon being the unwitting subject in some underground biological experiment. Either way, the jury is out. What do you think? I'll leave you with one last thing, though. I reversed the looped recording Miles made by the television in the bedroom. I imagine anything's possible with a bit of digital manipulation, but I still find it Curiously unnerving to listen to the following. Rabbit. Rabbits only come out when you've gone. I'll pretend it's a rabbit. Rabbits only come out when you've gone. Pretend it's a rabbit. Rabbits only come out when you've gone. I'll pretend it's a rabbit. It's only come out when you've gone. I'll pretend it's a rabbit. And until next time, guys and dolls. Lana out. If you enjoyed listening today, be sure to subscribe to the channel by hitting the red subscribe button below. After doing so, click the bell icon next to the subscribe button to receive new content notifications. If you'd like to support our work and receive exclusive perks, consider becoming a channel member by clicking the join button below. To support us in other ways, see the video description for links to our Bandcamp and Patreon pages our merch store over at Teespring, and further information relating to our releases on Audible, iTunes, and Spotify. And until next time.